Module 9 Macros and Formulae. So far on this course I've been saying how fantastic Excel Visual Basic is at doing all the processing you'd ever want to do. Now that's not strictly true. Excel itself is very capable on its own of producing a great number of results if you use the inbuilt formulae and it's so much easier to use the basic Excel shell as a foundation for your spreadsheet than it is to write everything in Visual Basic. So now we're going to look at how you can use formulae with Visual Basic. This is going to be a very simple spreadsheet. The first column is going to be a set of numbers that increment by one but we're going to increment them using the formulae take the cell above and add one. We're going to extend that down the whole spreadsheet. The average cell is equally simple. Here we take the average of all the numbers so far. So to do that we'd say average of, well just A2 in the first cell. Then in row 3 it would be the average of A2 and A3. In the next cell it would be the average of A2 to A4 and so on and so forth. This macro is going to run at the click of a button. So if we right click on the button and view code you can see that we're all ready to write it. Incidentally the count cells will tell us the progress our macros made. We're hoping to populate 10,000 rows of data with this macro and it may not be instant. So first and foremost we need to put a 1 in cell A2. This cell's an exception for the rest of the sheet as it does not contain a formula. In cell 31 we need to put the formula equals A2 plus 1. Now when you want Excel to enter text, you always need to surround it with parentheses, like so. If we delete the contents of cell A3, we can see if it works. We can see it does work. This is perfectly adequate, but for ease of reading, it's better not to keep it like this. Imagine if we'd written cells 3, 1 equals A2 plus 1 without the equals. It now just writes A2 plus 1 in the cell. Therefore, to tell anyone developing the code that there's a formula in the cell, we can put at the end of it dot .formula, and that will have the same effect as before. In practice, we don't just want cell A3 to have a formula. Instead, we want to create a little loop which starts at line 3 and goes to line 10,000. That fills in the formula all the way down column 1. We know the 3 gets replaced by row num, but what do we replace the 2 with? The simple answer is row num minus 1. However, if we just write row num minus 1, we'll be lucky if Excel can compute it at all. As you see, it now says name in cell A3 because the formula says A row num minus 1, but we haven't defined an A row num in the spreadsheet. In fact, it's caused complete chaos. If you worked through module 8's assignment, you will know that the correct notation is to close parenthesis and use ampersand symbols around the variable or cell address that you wish to replace with a formula. The code is now correct. We can see it populating 2, 3 and so on. We also want to fill in cell F5 with the amount of progress being made so if we just give this a cell name comp A and simply write comp A equals Ronom. And now we press play. As we can see, the macro is by no means instant, and although we're watching it go up to 10,000 very nicely, it would be nice if a macro could progress a bit quicker. There are two good ways of speeding macros up. One is to stop the screen showing every single change on the spreadsheet in turn. So if you use the line application.screenupdating equals false, and then at the end of the macro say application.screenupdating equals true, then you will only see what's happened at the beginning and end of the macro. So if we reset our counter to zero and try rerunning things, this should run a little bit quicker. Excel constantly trying to refresh the screen is more of a problem where rows are being copied from A to B or rows are being deleted. And in this case, it hasn't made too much of a difference to the speed. What in fact holds Excel up is that every time a change is made to the spreadsheet, it will recalculate all the formulae in the spreadsheet and by the end we've got 10,000 different formulae. So the best way to operate would be to put all the formulae in place once and then just do the calculation once at the end of the macro. So to stop Excel recalculating use the line application.calculation equals 
Excel calculation manual, which means we can tell Excel to recalculate using the command application.calculate, but otherwise it won't bother. And then at the end of the macro, we will have to write application.calculation equals Excel calculation automatic. Note this change means formulae within Excel won't actually work until we reach the end of the macro. Now, were there to be an error and for us not to reach the end of the macro, this could cause a great deal of confusion. So when using these commands, it is always best to use an error handling command like on error go to exit sub and then put the line exit sub at the bottom above your changes to the Excel system. The same goes for disabling and enabling events, which we have dealt with before. Incidentally, if we now rerun the macro, it will run a lot quicker. It's taken two seconds this time. Which is good, because just imagine how slow Excel would have been if we'd also introduced our formulae for averages. I've taken the liberty of writing in the formula for averages, which needs to go in column two, and as before, we could just replace the three with a row num. However, that's not the best way of doing things. At the moment, we're not writing very flexible code. That's because column A is referred to within the Visual Basic itself. That means if anyone ever moves column A, the macro could potentially be in difficulty. That would be the case if we didn't have one here, but we had a column name. Therefore, we really want a way of addressing a whole cell, so finding cell A2 from our notation cells to 1. The way to do this is to close parenthesis and use ampersands, but to write cells 21.address. This is a far more robust way of approaching things. Where A3 was before, we can replace it with cells ronum1.address. Now if we run the macro, it should give us all the formulae we need. It's taken about 8 seconds to run, which given the number of formulae we've introduced isn't bad going. If we look at our spreadsheet, note that Excel introduces dollar signs before the column and row numbers. This simply means you can't copy the formulae from, say, cell B5 into cell B6 and expect it to automatically update. In fact, it will put exactly the same cell references in B6, as I can demonstrate. That is, of course, not a problem because we're always going to be introducing that formula using Visual Basic. These principles can be extended to absolutely any function of Excel, even if you're using an external data provider. As long as you can write the formula in the taskbar, you can enter the formula using Visual Basic.